when a profound silence covered all things, and night was in the middle of its course, your all-powerful word, O Lord, bounded from heaven's royal throne. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. You are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Your Word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that the newness of the nativity in the flesh of your only begotten Son may set us free, For ancient servitude holds us bound beneath the yoke of sin through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the first letter of St. John. I am writing to you, children, because your sins have been forgiven for his name's sake. I am writing to you, fathers, because you know him who is from the beginning. I am writing to you, young men, because you have conquered the evil one. I write to you, children, because you know the Father. I write to you, fathers, because you know him who is from the beginning. I write to you, young men, because you are strong and the word of God remains in you and you have conquered the evil one. Do not love the world or the things of the world. If anyone loves the world, The love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, sensual lust, enticement for the eyes, and a pretentious life is not from the Father, but is from the world. Yet the world and its enticement are passing away. But whoever does the will of God remains forever. The word of the Lord. Let the heavens be glad and the earth rejoice. Give to the Lord, you families of nations. Give to the Lord glory and praise. Give to the Lord the glory due his name. Bring gifts and enter his courts. Worship the Lord in holy attire. Tremble before him all earth. Say among the nations, the Lord is king. He has made the world firm, not to be moved. He governs the peoples with equity.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. There was a prophetess, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher. She was advanced in years, having lived seven years with her husband after her marriage, and then as a widow until she was 84. She never left the temple, but worshipped night and day with fasting and prayer. And coming forward at that very time, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were awaiting the redemption of Jerusalem. When they had fulfilled all the prescriptions of the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, the church uh, holds up before us the figure of Anna, Anna, who is a prophetess. And, of course, the the main point of the, the gospel today is that Anna recognizes Christ and uh, gave thanks to him, and that's the story. Uh, But I'd like to say a little bit about Anna. She, uh, some things kind of strike strike us about her not much is said about Anna in this particular passage nor in other parts of scripture um, but one of the things you, you notice is it says uh, she was advanced in years now it doesn't say she was old it says she was advanced in years and we know how old she was she was 84 and uh, I was thinking you know it's kind of a nicer way to say that someone's old right I'm advanced in years I'm not old don't use that three-letter word. See, so you notice that she uh, was advanced in years. And the second thing you notice about Anna is she, of course, had married, and she was a widow. And she was 84 years old, and she was a widow. Um, when did she marry? Probably sometime after 15, 16. But let's say she married at 18. Let's say she was old, perhaps, and married at 18. Then she lived with her husband for seven years, and then her husband dies, and she's a widow. So that's like 60 years that she lived as a widow. 60 years. And it, in this, talking about young and old, it, it, it reminds me, it's been said that the young the season of being young, you, you acquire things, right? You're, you're, you're in the mode of acquiring, and then in the season of being old, you're losing things. So, so when you're young, you acquire height. <laughs> uh, you, you acquire strength and vigor and capabilities. And then when you're old, you lose some of those capabilities. You know, you acquire knowledge and memory. And s- some of us, when we get whole, old, we lose our memories. We acquire spouses, we acquire children, homes, cars, all sorts of things. And then as we age, we start to lose those things. I know these guys behind me are probably at the age where they're acquiring car keys at some point. <laughs> and uh, at, at a certain point, they're going to, you know, their car keys will be taken from them, right? When they get old, people take our car keys from us. They think it's too dangerous for us to drive. I don't know if their mom will take the car keys from them earlier, but... So being young is acquiring things, and as we age, we have to kind of let go through our fingertips of the things that we possess, right? And here we see Anna, who had acquired a husband and then had lost him a little too early, and so she was faced with this loss very early in her life, perhaps even at the age of 25. And what did she do when she had that loss? She became a prophetess. She, it doesn't, you know, we don't know much, but she became a prophetess, spent a lot of time at the temple. Spent a lot of time 
in the temple and was at that moment in the temple. Now, now it says in the scripture that she spent, she never left the temple. Now, I think that might be a little exaggeration. Sometimes scripture will say something but not mean it literally. So she probably didn't live in the temple because it says later she, came, she met Jesus who came forward at that, she, she came forward at that time and encountered Jesus. So obviously she wasn't there all the time. But in any case, she, she was religious and she spent a lot of time in the temple. And this Anna had lost something big early on. And it reminds me that people, some of the greatest people that I have met, I don't know, you perhaps as well, are people who have uh, endured great losses. Especially if they've endured great losses in their life early. I think of John Paul II, who lost both of his parents very, very early. He lost, during the war, in a sense, he lost his country to the Germans. Encountering this, these losses in our lives has a great way of making us into great people. So as we encounter the figure of Anna, perhaps, this morning, let's pause to consider what, what, what are the losses, big and small, that I have encountered in my life, and how have I responded to those losses? Have I responded like Anna did, who, who gave her life to God and spent time worshiping and honoring him and serving him in the temple? Or have I become perhaps embittered or selfish uh, or mad at God because of the losses that, that I have encountered? Losses, when we encounter them, whether they're on the playing field or in the business world, or in the relational sphere, losses have a, a real way of making us into something great. So Anna, pray for us. Let us offer our petitions. We pray for our needs and the needs of our world. We continue to pray for our religious leaders, especially Pope Francis and our local bishop, that God would give them wisdom and guidance. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our nation and all the institutions of our nation. We ask that God would protect them and make them correspond to his will. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those serving in the missions overseas, those who are encountering, encountering persecution and difficulties on behalf of the gospel, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for, continue to pray for our own families during this time that we might draw closer as families to Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we pray for those among us, especially who have endured great losses this last year, perhaps before. We ask God to draw near to them, and we pray that they might uh, draw near to God as Anna the prophetess did. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who have died, especially Mike Sorensen, for whom this Mass is offered. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We ask Our Lady to present these petitions to her son as she presented the needs of the couple in Cana, and so we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. We make these prayers with confidence through Christ our Lord. As the altar is prepared, I will spare you verse 3, which is alarmingly depressing, but we will sing verse 4 because it's very sweet of, uh, of the Father's love begotten. <clears throat> Number 326, verse 4. Oh, that birth forever blessed when the virgin full of grace 
by the Holy Ghost conceiving, for the Savior of our race, and the babe the world's redeemer, first revealed his sacred face, evermore and evermore. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive with favor, O Lord, we pray, the offerings of your people, that what they profess with devotion and faith may be theirs through these heavenly mysteries, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For on the feast of this off-filled mystery, though invisible in his own divine nature, he has appeared visibly in ours, and begotten before all ages, he has begun to exist in time, so that raising up in himself all that was cast down, he might restore unity to all creation, and call straying humanity back to the heavenly kingdom. And so with all the angels we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Bernard, our Bishop, and all those who are holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you the sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls and hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred day on which Blessed Mary, the Immaculate Virgin, brought forth the Savior of this world, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damian, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect, make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands. With eyes raised to heaven to you, God, as almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember, Lord, your servants, especially Mike, who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who those sinners hope in your abundant mercies, Graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
From his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. We'll sing verse 5 of 326. O ye heights of heaven, adore him. Angel hosts his praises sing. Powers, dominions bow before him. And extol our God and King. Let no tongue on earth be silent. Every voice in concert ring evermore and evermore. Let us pray. O oh God, who touch us through our partaking of your sacrament, work, we pray, the effects of its power in our hearts that we may be made fit to receive your gift through this very gift itself, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thanks for joining us for Mass today. Thank you, Deacon Dan Brewer, for serving and for preaching. Tomorrow is um, New Year's Eve day, and... Um, 
we, uh, it's, it's a Friday, and it's a Jesus Friday. We will, um, we'll have mass, and then we'll have one hour of adoration, and then the, the building will be closed. So anyone who wants a holy hour, any of our regular Friday adores, please know that the only hour of adoration tomorrow is, is the one hour immediately following mass. And um, look at, before I, rather than unnecessarily confuse you, because I'll make a mistake, please look at the, the bulletin for, um, for mass times for the, for the weekend. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go forth in peace to announce the gospel. Thanks be to God. We'll conclude with our regular prayers to glory of St. Joseph and St. Michael, and then we'll sing the final verse of 326. Glorious St. Joseph, most chaste spouse of the Blessed Virgin Mary, and humble foster father of the Christ child, beseech you through the merits and sufferings of your most holy family to hear our earnest prayer for the relief and alleviation of our parish debt, so that we might work ever more effectively for the glory of God and the salvation of souls. You who are given the awesome charge of protecting and providing for the author of salvation, we beg you to hear our plea, dear Father of the poor, the afflicted, and the troubled. Lend your mighty power to our cause, so that we know of your glory, and the invincible might of the humble, the just, and the obedient. We ask this in all our prayers, in the strong and holy name of Jesus Christ, the transfigured and transfiguring one. Amen. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits, prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Christ to thee with God the Father. And, O Holy Ghost, to Thee, Him and chant with high thanksgiving and unwearied praises be. Honor, glory, and dominion an eternal victory evermore and evermore.